So, Princey, um, you are the founder of Africa for Nuclear. Can you tell me more about your career and how it got you to where you are today? Or just about more about oh, okay. Africa for Nuclear. Yeah, maybe about Africa for Nuclear. But just to give you a brief background of my career, I got into the nuclear industry by accident. I got a call from, okay, I was uh, uh, without a job at that time. Then I got a call to say, you were invited for an interview at some you know, nuclear organization and I had to travel about 90 kilometers to get there. Then I get there and I like, it looks like there's no one in this area. What's happening? The only building I could see was just the building I was in, the security mm -hmm. gate. Then, yeah, I went there for an interview and when I left, I was like, I'm not coming back here. I'm so used <laughs> to the high tech building life, you know, yeah. the type of a life. But then I got a call to say, you go. <laughs> wow. you were hired then i went dragged myself and yeah that's how i became a nuclear professional then i worked myself up <laughs> i worked my way i worked my way up then later on i became a nuclear advocate then i met the stand up for nuclear group and then i decided to to, to establish the Africa for Nuclear campaign, which is an advocacy campaign that aims to promote nuclear as a key contributor to achieving Africa's agenda for sustainable development. That's awesome. Wow. So what does um, nuclear energy look like in Africa? We have one commercial nuclear power plant in Africa, only in South Africa. We have just two reactors that uh, provide uh, around about 1,900 yeah, megawatts of nuclear uh, okay. capacity, which is 5% of the total electricity in South Africa. But oh. we also have a research and reactor, um, mm -hmm. a, a, a research reactor at Pelinda by, at Nexa, South African Nuclear Energy Corporation. And through that reactor, South Africa is one of the, you know, the top four producers and, and, and suppliers of nuclear medicine globally. Wow. Yes. It's impressive. It is. So that's basically what we have in Africa in terms of nuclear. Wow. Um, that's great to know. Now, you were once quoted saying that uh, nuclear energy is the most valuable technology on this planet. Can you elaborate on that at all? You know, I say things and they come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I said that because one of the challenges or socioeconomic challenges facing the African continent is energy security mm -hmm. and lack of industrialization, as you may be aware. And, and right now, I mean, if Africa is wants to industrialize or wants to solve a lot of socioeconomic challenges, they need to start with solving the energy issues because there's lack of, you know, there's millions of people who are without access to electricity. Absolutely. Yes. And now with the world going net zero emissions, carbon emissions by 2050, it means that what we used before to industrialize as the world, not just Africa, um, is, is coal, mainly it's fossil fuels. And then we are not going to be able to use that anymore. So the only solution to base load power electricity that will be you know, available 24-7 for people is nuclear. Yeah, absolutely. So you're very involved in these energy justice efforts, which is unique to your career, right? A lot of not, not a lot of people in the nuclear industry are so focused on um, social justice issues. So how can nuclear solve some of these issues? I mean, I know you just spoke about energy poverty, and that's awesome. Is there any other way that um, it's just important to solve these energy poverty issues? It's there's really no other way. Uh, the, I mean, obviously, a country has to look at the, you know, at, 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 at the availability of resources, number one, and, and also at, at, at the capacity of their grid. So it's not just nuclear, by the way. There are countries like Rwanda that uh, are not in a coastal area that really would look into issues of, uh, you know, look into uh, deployment of, small modular reactors but also with renewables because yeah but it, it, it's a um, it's you know it's, it's just about energy mix that is you know uh, available and that is um, re relevant to the country mm -hmm. to the specific country needs yeah and, yeah 
Yeah. So as much as I advocate for nuclear, I'm not saying nuclear only. I'm also yeah. saying, yeah, look into nuclear. But for me, once again, I think I'm going to be controversial because the, the urgent need for Africa is in, in energy security. So if really other countries want to go for fossil fuels, I would not say no, because mm -hmm. yes, at, at the end of the day, it's about people. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I agree. He said it's not nuclear, nothing. Definitely not. It's just a helpful source. Um, now, you're also a passionate advocate for promoting nuclear education among the youth. Is that right? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I don't know about yeah, advocating for it, though, but I do like to educate people about nuclear because to me, what the world faced currently, it would have been avoidable if nuclear professionals went all out to educate people about their technology. So mm -hmm. it's just for me having to educate people and we have to start them at a very young age. That's great. Um, I also read some things about how you have a particular focus on women and girls in the nuclear industry. Um, is there anything that you can tell me about that? Yes, I, you know, I've always been a member of Women in Nuclear South Africa. And last year I was even awarded a, you know, <laughs> I was given an award by the uh, nuclear, Women in Nuclear Global. So I think I am indebted to them somehow. Yeah, congrats. So yes. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think advocating for women to be part of uh, the industry is, yeah, is one of my passion. I can say that mm -hmm. because, yeah, I, I mean, when I started the industry, I joined Women in Nuclear and that's what they are about. You know, yeah. attracting young girls to join the industry. Yeah, absolutely. What is one thing you wish that people who are afraid of nuclear knew? Something that you know from your career, you could tell them anything. People are afraid of, I think many people I've met, they talk about radioactive waste. So. For me, I don't know why they are afraid of waste because, I mean, nuclear industry is one of the very few industries that manage uh, or safely manage their waste uh, disposal process. And I've, I've never, you know, heard that a, the waste, the nuclear waste has affected somebody or killed somebody anywhere in the world. So they should be giving credit to the industry for safely managing the disposal of their waste radioactive waste absolutely that's a really great one yeah okay what is your favorite thing about nuclear energy my favorite thing is that you know when you talk about nuclear people pay attention you know people think you are smart and you know i've been regarded as one of the smartest people in the world and i think that's what i yeah, like about it that's great <laughs> yes <laughs> That's a funny one. I have never heard anyone say that before. <laughs> it's totally true, though. It is. I mean, people are like, what? You're talking nuclear. Like, they come close. Like. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, Princey. It was awesome to talk to you. And we, as a nonprofit, appreciate all of the advocacy work that you do, all of the work in the industry that you do, um, especially with the promotion of women and girls in nuclear. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. I think it was unexpected, but I enjoyed every moment of it. Oh, yes, please <laughs> go to YouTube and search for Africa for Nuclear and watch my videos. And also, please follow me on TikTok and on LinkedIn. That's where I'm available. Awesome.